Competitive has come a long way since it was officially announced in Destiny 2. But one thing that keeps drawing Guardians back to test their skills are going to be the weapons tied to Competitive. So before we get into the Competitive Guide, I want to sum up my thoughts in a few words. This is your season. If you've struggled in the past to get 2100 points to get your Pinnacle weapons, this is your season. If you've gone past 2100 points but have never acquired the Not Forgotten, or maybe even Legend 5500 points, this is your season. From the changes, from the matchmaking changes which searches players within your skill gap to the changes where you don't lose your streak during a loss but are only set back one game, this is probably the easiest competitive is ever going to get and the easiest I've seen it. So let's get into the guide, the tips that I'm going to be offering in this video. For those wondering, I do have a breakdown of Widow's Court being released this weekend. So if you guys haven't subscribed or even clicked the bell for those notifications, do that now if you're looking for that video. But today's video is going to be focused on competitive. Now let's first understand the game mode. So the game mode is going to be survival. Now I can be blunt about it and say, well just survive. But there's more to it. It's like the term song and dance. You can know the song, but you don't know how to tango. So in today's video guys, we're going to be talking about just several tips that are going to allow you to prevail over your enemies and potentially get your 2100 points or 5500 points. So getting into it, tip number one is going to be regroup. Now this one might be more important than the others, only for the fact being that it's the game mode is a 3v3 survival and if you see your teammates being picked off upon engaging, there is no shame in making a tactical retreat to regroup. So you can pull off a 1v2, but if the enemy has numbers, they will more than likely get the win on you and win engagements. Speaking of regrouping, one of the most common mistakes I've seen in players is they don't regroup and this causes a chain reaction. It allows enemies to take advantage of the spawns. Say you spawn in, right? Your teammate goes down. Let's call that teammate number one. A few seconds later, teammate number two goes down and you're all by yourself at that moment. Now, if teammate one decides to rush back into the fray and now all three of you have been split, teammate two spun in it, teammate one is heading towards you and you just died. Teammate one arrives and dies. Teammate two is on its way. You're spawning in. As you, get, as you can tell guys, it's gonna be a chain reaction and as the last thing you wanna do is lead to a chain reaction. So remember that guys, regroup is key regroup is going to allow you to have the numbers game so tip number two guys and this is going to be a good one here play the life advantage so do you know what happens when your enemy has one pocket life that's what i call it, pocket life when the enemy has one pocket life and you have three when that timer runs out you win you win because you have the life advantage a common mistake that i see a lot and yes guys i'm victim to this one too is while you have the life advantage and are pushing the enemies which can either cause one of two things guys you're gonna lose that life advantage and flip it to where the flag spawns or you're gonna lose the round so if you have lives in your pocket and it's more than the enemy team slow down and let them play into your hands utilize the life advantage to your advantage and making sure that you make the most of it because now they have to play into your hands if you have three lives they have to knock your lives down to be even with you. So play the life advantage. Tip number three, and this is a good one here. Don't be scared of supers. We've all been there, guys. We've seen those titans that are unstoppable. Those Dawn Blade Warlocks that just keep throwing swords. Don't be scared of supers, guys. You can easily beat a super by a simple team shot. Supers are not tanks anymore. And why is it important to try to team shot a super? Well. Allowing a super to play the field can either cause you to lose the map advantage or lose lives when it could be easily avoided by two players just focus firing. Keep in mind that your enemy may utilize a super to secure power ammo. Guys, supers will eat lives. If you let a smash titan just run around the map and you decide to let's just run from it, it'll either push you away from the advantage spawn or you're going to lose power ammo. Which brings us into tip number four. And this one is very important. Power ammo, even though it's tweaked, it's still very powerful. Tip number four, guys, power ammo is still powerful. So power ammo in comp is usually set in the middle of the map. 
a power advantage position, which in my opinion, a lot of people don't understand what this means. Take Convergence, AKA Pantheon. Power ammo is gonna be in the center by the lake, the little waterfall area. That is the center of the map. By acquiring it, you can, e you can keep a team in either side of the spawn. If I pull power ammo in that section right there of Convergence, and you're spawning in the left side to the Vex section or to the other section, I will keep you back in your spawn with my power ammo until it spawns up again. Power ammo is key and is still very powerful. And all this right there, guys, especially in Convergence, I'm using it as a prime example because it's easy to break that down. But when it comes to Convergence, you have power ammo. Not only do you have power advantage in that section, power position, but now you have the center of the map where the zone spawns. So let's get into it. Brave, what happens if I lost power advantage? Say they have power ammo. So you have either two, one or two options. You can move in as a team or burn a super to require or reacquire the power position. Do you keep in mind that if you guys see a rocket icon in the left hand corner, like they picked up the war cliff, try not to stay too close together because the war cliff coil will take your lunch money. So you're gonna either play, move in as a team. If you see that's a machine gun, you're gonna move in as a team because he can't take you all down. You team fire that guy, you're gonna win. Getting into it guys, tip number five. Don't fight the meta. This one is plain and simple and I like to say it is experimenting with loadouts and techniques, that's for classic mix. Unless you've mastered it, don't you bring that in a comp. I don't need you running around with a bow and the vow unless you've mastered that technique because you're just hindering your team. When it comes to not fighting the meta, if Bungie drops a patch today to make the thorn a two-tap weapon, then you better be utilizing that thorn and utilizing the two-tap potential it has. Guys, that's just a, uh, an example there. It's actually, it doesn't actually two-tap unless you have the perk active. But if Bungie was to make a banana in the game, one-tap people to the head, you better be utilizing the banana. Use whatever is powerful and don't feel ashamed. If you guys want, you can ask for forgiveness after comp, after you've reached your goal. So getting into our next section, how many of you have been walking down the street and you've gotten gum under your shoe? It's pretty annoying, right? It's tough to get out and even when you take it off the gum, it still feels like that sticky sensation is down there, right? Well, that's gonna be the next topic we're getting into, guys. Tip number six, be gum. Stick close to your teammates, be gum. It's very simple. I'm all for flanking. I'm a huge fan of getting flanks and getting side picks, but nothing beats the team shot. If you are flanking, correction, if you are not flanking, you better be at your teammate's side. If you are a warlock and you have a rift, you drop it for your teammate. So if he needs to back away after taking some damage, he can heal and still stay close to you. You can keep them right by your side. If you are a Titan and you see power ammo about to spawn and dropping in, you put your shield up, you let your teammate pull that power ammo, you lay down some, some suppression fire. That's how you work as a team. If your teammate puts damage into an enemy and they have to back out because they took damage, then you better be there to swap and clean up that kill. That's how close you need to be. This is how team shots work. This is how when you die, tip number one, regroup plays a big role. You regroup, you become gum. And right then and there, if I'm able to put three shots into all enemies, maybe I body two people with a sniper, my teammate who decides to be gum, or vice versa, if I see that happen, and I see shots being put down range, and I can see people that are easy uh, easy cleanups, I better be right next to my teammate to clean them up. Unless you're going for a flank, but that's a whole different scenario. Now, another one, guys, we're gonna get into one of the last and final tips, and this is huge. This tip right here, I see it all the time. Do not be a victim of tunnel vision. Tip number seven, don't get tunnel vision. Now, it's hard to explain and it's hard not to focus on the enemy in front of you, especially if they're putting damage into you. Keep your eyes on your radar. Keep your eyes peeled for that flank. When you're on a 3v3 survival, especially in the current survival game mode, when you start getting to the higher ranks, People will try to flank you left and right. And the last thing you want to do is you have your entire team focus on a warlock who's sitting on his rift with an overshield, just putting a couple shots down range while your team is getting shot at. 
you're getting flanked from behind and becoming sandwiched. You don't want that. Prioritize your targets a lot better. The enemy across the map isn't going to kill you unless you allow it to. So if you start taking damage, take some cover. If you're utilizing cover properly, it's the enemy coming up to your six, coming up on your six there, that is going to destroy you. If your teammate is focusing on that warlock sitting in that rift doing a couple shots down range, flip and go after the 1v1 behind you. Your teammate who's sticking to you like gum will focus and will say, shoot, I better help out. Remember guys, if you're playing your role properly, you have three sets of eyes on the map. Not everyone has to look at the same lane. If I'm focused on the lane in front of me and I notice someone's coming behind me, I can turn around and focus on that enemy while I'm allowing my teammates continue uh, continuing the fight up front. That is huge, guys. Do not get tunnel vision. I see people see it all, uh, do it all the time. Focus on a fighter, fight in front of me. Oh, he's almost dead. I got to focus up there. And next thing you know, you're getting a guy coming up behind you, throwing a grenade at you, arc bolts in your entire team. And what happens now? You get collapsed, you get sandwiched on. Other than that, guys, those are my tips right there. Tips one through seven. Keep them in mind. This will allow you to play better. You can't choose your teammates. You cannot choose the teammates you're going to get in competitive. It is random. But what you can do is play better. Play around them and make them better. By helping them become better, it'll allow you to play better and allow you to get to your end goal, your final result, which is going to be 2,100 points. I know there's a lot of people out there that do not have the Luna, that do not have the Mountaintop or the Recluse. Or maybe you're trying to go for the brand new scout rifle, the Randy's throwing knife. This is your guide to get it. I know people who have acquired Lunas and it was the most difficult thing for them. Guys, you can get 5,500 points. That I promise you. Whatever I said in this guide, use it. Learn it. It's stuff that I use all the time. Now, if you guys want, I will be streaming this weekend competitive. You guys want to jump in, pick my brain, go right ahead. If you guys enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor, like it and share it with your friends. These weapons that are pinnacle weapons, this is the season to acquire them. You've been missing out the last four seasons on the Lunas, on the Not Forgotten, the Mountain Top, the Recluse. This is your season to get it and enjoy it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to drop a like, comment down below, and share this video with your friends. Subscribe if you're new, and also do me a huge favor, guys. You want to follow me on Instagram, you want to follow me on Twitch, Twitter, all that stuff, guys. Do that now. Other than that, I will see you in the next video. Hey, did you enjoy the video? Click right there for a random video. Click right there for my latest video. Stay up to date with BraveX Hero. If you haven't followed me on Twitch, I recommend it. Go do it right now. Twitch.tv slash BraveX Hero. New to the channel? Subscribe button right there. Click it. Do it. Do it now. I'll see you guys in the next video.